yes guys we abruptly stopped unfortunately so let's continue from where we stopped i was talking about variable consideration guys i'm sorry yeah i was talking about variable consideration where a part of the consideration is contingent upon an uncertain future event and the facts of the circumstances have indicated that there is a price concession whenever there is variable consideration i'll have to determine the transaction price based on the expectation of the enterprise now how do i determine transaction price based on expectation there are two ways in which he has determined transaction price number one is expected value number two is most likely amount most likely amount can be used for determination of transaction price when there are only two possible outcomes i complete the contract within 15 months i will get 110 rupees if i complete within 18 months or 24 months or any thereafter i will get 100 rupees only two possible outcomes 100 or 110 in such cases where there are only two possible outcomes i'll go along with the concept of most likely amount that means either it is 100 or it is 110 either it is a or it is b but when the outcomes are more than two that means three or more outcomes are possible in such case you cannot use the concept of most likely amount to determine the transaction price in such case i will use the concept of expected value how do i determine expected value as per expected value transaction price is equal to a sum of all the outcomes into their probability so where there is more than two outcomes possible i will apply the formula of expected value that means wherever the transaction price has more than one outcome or more than two outcomes i will sum all the possible outcomes into their multiplied by their probability to determine the transaction price but remember guys we have a concept called as conservatism yes do you remember the concept of conservatism you cannot recognize a probable revenue unless and until it is actually certain unless there is a certainty i cannot recognize a probable income same application of conservatism concept if i put into variable consideration it is called as constraints on variable consideration look at the language that he uses the language used under variable under constraint of variable consideration is revenue should be estimated only to an extent or revenue should be estimated to the extent of transaction price in such a way that the reversal of revenue is highly improbable it is not highly probable that there will be a reversal of revenue only to such extent i will recognize a revenue based on transaction price that means you should not include such amount of revenue which is not probable to come so if i recognize revenue on 110 today that is including the bonus which i will receive but if i am not able to complete the project within the specified time period then i'll have to reverse to the extent of that additional revenue recognized that is the concept of variable consideration and the constraint in the variable consideration so what is he uh, talking about under constraint of variable consideration recognize revenue only to the extent it is highly probable that there will not be any significant reversal in future only to the extent it is highly probable that there is no significant reversal of revenue in future only to that extent i will recognize the transaction price so my determination of transaction price to, should be to the extent where it is only highly probable that there will not be a reversal in future clear so that is my application of variable consist, uh, constraint on variable consideration whenever the consideration is variable upon uncertain future events clear now what are the factors which could actually influence the likelihood of reversal my experience on that particular contract is very limited my experience on that particular contract is very limited i might assume that i i will be entitled to receive the bonus or additional payment on the transaction but it is limited because i don't have so much of experience in such cases i will only limit my transaction price to the extent i will receive the consideration irrespective of the time limit of completion i will not include the bonus number two multiple prices and discounts of similar products have been available this product i sold it at 95 i sold it at 98 i sold it at 110 i sold it at 120 
I don't have one determined price. In such cases also, your constraint on variable consideration becomes applicable because you will have to recognize revenue only to the extent it is highly probable that there will not be a reversal of revenue in future. There is a lengthy period of uncertainty. I am entitled to receive bonus, but when I will receive, after 5 years if I will receive, if the number of defects during these 5 years are limited to only 10. Now when will you get that bonus? After 5 years. So there is a lengthy period of uncertainty whether I will be actually eligible to get that additional payment or not. There also I will have to apply this constraint on variable consideration. Sometimes there are factors which are not within my control. It is beyond my control or beyond the enterprise control to get that particular bonus. I am into supplying windmills or energy through windmills. The customer said, if your energy uh, supply through windmills has increased or is reaching a particular limit, you are entitled to get some additional bonus. But it completely depends, it, it is not only within my control of the enterprise. I have established the windmill, but it also depends upon nature, natural forces to determine whether I will be entitled to receive the bonus or not. Therefore, these are factors which are beyond my enterprise control. So under these circumstances, I will have to apply the concept of constraint on variable consideration where I will recognize revenue only to the extent it is highly probable that there will not be any significant reversal in future. For example, let's say I am entitled to receive bonus if I complete the project within 18 months. I have, I have been working on similar project for the last 20 years and over the last 20 years similar projects have completed within 15 months itself. In such, in such cases, I need not apply constraint on variable consideration because it is not influencing the variable consideration or it is not the likelihood of reversal is not probable because I already have enough experience to show that there is always a significant, uh, you know, I could complete the contract within a particular time limit where I am entitled to receive bonus. Clear? Moving forward into this concept of time value of money. Now, what is this time value of money and why does it actually emerge? I will actually com come up with this time value of money when I am expecting that there is a significant delay from the time I deliver the goods and from the time I receive the payment. I am saying that sometimes, I am saying sometimes, Generally, my credit period is 30 days. Generally, my credit period is equal to 30 days. But in a particular transaction with X Limited, I sold goods on sale or transfer of goods is on 1st April but the amount will fall due but my due date of payment the consideration is expected to be due only on 1st October that means the difference between these two dates is 10 uh, is 6 months or 180 days this 6 months is beyond normal credit terms. Since it is beyond normal credit terms, is greater than 30 days or significant difference exists. Therefore, I will say that there is an inherent factor of time value of money included in this. According to the concept of time value of money in determining the consideration or the transaction price, I will say that the transaction price should be divided into two parts. My transaction price should be a combination of two things. First one is relating to goods and services which are transferred.
and the other part of transaction price will be relating to finance income because there is an extended time period there has to be a finance income guys this is very similar to the concept that we have discussed under india 16 38 40 and india 2 when the payment is deferred beyond normal credit terms the value of the asset should only be determined based on normal credit terms the difference between both the prices transaction price and the price under normal credit terms should be treated as finance charges their finance charges here it is finance income that is the only difference otherwise significantly both are same but remember guys this concept of time value of money will emerge only if there is a significant delay between the day on which i deliver the product and the day on which i expect to collect the money or collect the consideration if it is beyond normal credit terms we get the concept of time value of money but remember sometimes even though there is a delay it shall not be considered as a time value of money included in it sometimes even though there is a delay time value of money concept is not considered to be included what are those situations number one where the delivery of product is delayed on buyer's request the buyer came up to me and said you hold the delivery you don't deliver the goods to me when should i deliver after six months you deliver in such cases i will not consider that there is a time value of money number two a situation where in number two where the amount which i am withholding i am not transferring a certain amount only because i want to safeguard my interest this is called as retention money this is called as retention money for example let's say i am a contractor my contract is for a period of five years at the end of each quarter i will bill upon my customer my customer is withholding 10 percent of my invoice so so that that is called as retention money and he said he will pay this money only at the end of the contract that is five years this 10 percent money which is withheld is only to safeguard the interest of the customer the customer does not have any intention to delay the payment it is only withheld to safeguard the interest of the customer in such cases you cannot consider time value of money in most of the construction contracts you come across this concept of retention money and it is very common but there is no time value of money which should be considered to be included under this concept of retention money number three where sometimes it is not within the enterprise control sometimes the delivery of the good and the payment are delayed due to some other abnormal factors due to some other abnormal factors in such situation those factors are which are not in my control i don't expect that there is a time value of money the transaction price and the time value of money is divided into two parts where a revenue for goods and services and a finance income should be separated it is only possible when the transaction price is more than the cash price that means the delivery of the good and the date of expected payment is beyond normal credit terms normal beyond normal length there is no significant time value of money or finance element if the transfer of good is delayed at buyer's request or the amount is withheld for safeguarding the interest on non-performance non like retention money and consideration is variable upon factors which are beyond the enterprise control or the customer control. This is the third adjustment which we are looking at in transaction price. First one was variable consideration. Second one was with respect to uh, your constraint on variable consideration. Third one is with respect to time value of money. And now we come to the fourth one, which is non-cash consideration. Whenever you have this case of non-cash consideration, remember, I will always recognize or measure the transaction price with respect to the fair value of the consideration received. Whenever there is a non-cash consideration, I transferred good A, I received service B. I transferred good A to the customer, customer gave me a service B in return. There is no cash consideration here. In such case, the transaction price should be measured at fair value of the consideration received. That is the service B received. If the fair value of the service cannot be determined or the good received is not determinable, 
if you cannot identify the fair value of the consideration received in such case the transaction price should be measured at the fair value of the consideration transferred what is the value of fair value of the good or service transferred it is at standalone selling price at which a similar good or service would have been transferred to the customer for cash the price at which a similar good or service can be transferred to the customer at cash should be considered as a standalone selling price or the fair value of consider of goods and services transferred i will apply the fair value of good and service transferred only if i cannot determine the fair value of consideration received otherwise generally transaction price is equal to fair value of consideration received if fair value of consideration received cannot be determined then i'll apply fair value of goods transferred fair value of goods transferred is equal to standalone selling price that is the price at which a good or a service is normally similar good or a service would have been normally transferred for cash so this is the fourth one which i'm looking at non cash consideration lastly i'll come to the concept of consideration payable to customer what is this consideration payable to customer let's understand when i come to the last adjustment of transaction price regarding consideration payable to customer one has to understand that this concept is very simple for example i went to lifestyle for shop okay i've shopped for 10000 rupees he gave me a voucher of 1000 rupees which can be redeemed on the next purchase if the next purchase is at least 5000 if you are billing 5000 in the next purchase he is giving you a discount coupon of 1000 rupees so on today's day when the 10000 rupees of billing has happened they have given me a voucher of 1000 rupees this is called as a consideration payable to customer for a similar good or a service for example he has given the same lifestyle have given me a voucher which can be used in any eatery any food joint i will get 50 percent off on the next purchase then this is called as a distinct good or a service so consideration payable to customer could be of similar goods or could be of distinct goods i purchased boost he has given me a bat signed by virat kohli free of cost distinct good i purchased boost he said on the next purchase of boost you'll get 10 rupees off similar good so whenever there is a, a such kind of consideration transferred I'll have to first bifurcate the consideration payable to customer into two parts. Such consideration payable in similar good or service, such consideration payable in distinct goods. If it is paid in similar goods, I have a different tree. If it is paid in distinct goods, I have a different tree. What is the tree? If it is paid in similar good, then the value of consideration paid to the customer, then the value of consideration paid to the customer should be reduced while recognizing revenue it should be reduced in recognition of revenue that means 10000 purchase on lifestyle he gave me 1000 rupees voucher the 1000 rupees will be reduced in recognizing revenue so i'll record bank account debit to revenue bank account debit 10000 which i collected to revenue 9000 to deferred revenue 1000 why is the 1000 not recognized now because I will recognize this thousand when subsequently he will purchase the product on a future date. Let's say this voucher is valid for one year. Any time within the next one year, if he comes up and bills five thousand, I'll give him thousand rupee discount. He'll pay me only four thousand. So therefore, in such case where I received only four thousand, I'll record the entry like this: bank account debit four thousand, deferred revenue thousand, to revenue five thousand. This is a case where I have a similar good or a service. Let's say for example, I have a distinct good. A bat given for boost. They are distinct goods. Whenever there is a distinct good, revenue should be recognized for the entire transaction price. To the extent of consideration transferred to the customer or pay payable to the customer, I will recognize it at expense for the cost of that particular item but i purchased it from an outside vendor for about 40 rupees 
and Virat Kohli, I paid him a certain amount, amortized to this, but each bat is 20 rupees. 40 plus 20, 60 rupees should be recognized as expense in my PL. But my revenue will be recognized for the entire amount. Let's see what he's talking about. If it is for a similar good or the service, then reduce the consideration payable from transaction price. Recognize revenue when the customer utilizes the benefit or when the benefit expires. Within one year, the supplier never came back on it. He did not use the 1000 rupee coupon. One year expired. Now what you'll do? That expired coupon, I recognize as revenue now. So I'll write the entry as deferred revenue account debit to revenue 1000 rupees. If it is a distinct good, recognize revenue irrespective of consideration payable. The consideration payable should be recognized as expense at cost to the customer. Uh, sorry, at cost to the company. Clear? These are five adjustments we have, which we have seen as far as your transaction price is concerned. What are the adjustments? First one was variable consideration. Second one, constraint on variable consideration. Third one, non-cash non consideration. Number four, time value of money. Number five, consideration payable to customer. With this, we come to the end of step three, determination of transaction price. So out of total five steps, I've completed three steps. Number one, I've completed what is a, a contract, identification of contract. Second one, I completed identification of performance obligation under contract. Third step I completed is determination of transaction price. Now I'll come to step four. Now, what is your step four? Your step four is basically allocation of the transaction price which you determined under step three to each performance obligation identified under step two. So what am I doing out here? I'm doing something like this. Under step one, I identified a contract. Okay. Under step two, I determined or I identified multiple performance obligations in the contract. PO1, PO2, PO3 is multiple performance obligations in the contract. Like this, I identify. Then I moved into step 3. Under step 3, what I did was, I determined my transaction price. Second guys. Step 3, I determine my transaction price. Then what is your step 4? Your step 4 is allocating this transaction price to each of the performance obligation. This is my step 4. My step 4 is allocation of transaction price to each performance obligation in the contract. How do you allocate? This allocation of transaction price in the contract, allocation should be based on standalone selling price. Based on standalone selling price. of food or service transferred to customer under each performance obligation. Under each performance obligation, if you remember the definition of performance obligation, it includes a distinct good or a service transferred to the customer. So each performance obligation has a distinct good or a service. Such a distinct good or a service which is transferred to the customer, it should be, uh, we have to identify what is their standalone price. The allocation of transaction price should be based on 
the proportionate standalone selling price what do you mean by this concept of standalone selling price the price at which such good or service can be sold separately by the enterprise a price at which such good or service is generally sold separately by the enterprise should be the standalone selling price always remember my top priority my first priority in determining standalone selling price to determine standalone selling price my top priority is price at which similar good or service is sold by enterprise separately if i would have sold separately this good and service if i have already sold it then based on my past experience at what price did i transfer the good or service that should be the proportion in of standalone selling price but the company never had a, a you know a separate sale of good or service it's always on a combination basis a contract always included these separate pos then in such cases where you cannot determine what a price at which the customer or the the company normally sells these goods separately in that cases i come to my second priority under my second priority i can apply either of three techniques i can apply either of three techniques what are these three techniques first technique adjusted market assessment approach adjusted market assessment what do you mean by market assessment if a similar good or a service was sold separately by another enterprise then what price did he sell sir he was selling it at 100 my product is much more high quality 120 so market assessment of a similar good or a service added by the adjustment or directed by some adjustments number two cost plus method what do you mean by cost plus method in general i add 25 percent of margin the pro cost of this good which was delivered is 100 therefore as per cost plus method the value of this st the standalone selling price of this product is 125 residual method this residual method can only be applied per, for one performance obligation in the contract where under residual approach he will say that you identify the uh, standalone selling price of each performance obligation you identify for po1 you identify for po2 you can apply residual approach for po3 how will you apply po3 is equal to transaction price minus standalone selling price of PO1 and PO2. If you know the standalone selling price of PO1 and still standalone selling price of PO2, then PO3 is nothing but total transaction price minus standalone selling prices. So these are three techniques that I can adopt. If I cannot determine the standalone selling price by the entity's expectation of the goods, the entity has never sold the goods and services separately. You cannot use your first priority. Then come to the second priority, which applies three techniques. Any three techniques you can use. Adjusted market assessment. What is the similar pro uh, if the similar product is sold by any other uh, company? At what price is he selling separately? Take that and adjust it. Cost plus approach. Generally, I add 25% margin. The cost of this product is 100 plus 25%. 125 is your standalone selling price. Residual approach only can be applied if there is only one PO in the contract which is pending. In such cases, 
total transaction price minus the value of standalone selling price of all other performance obligations under the contract can determine the performance obligation price standalone selling price by residual approach clear step 4 allocation of standalone uh, transaction price in the proportion of their standalone selling prices what is your standalone selling price determined either by a similar transaction by the entity or if you cannot determine by priority 1 come to priority 2 adjusted market assessment cost plus ma margin and finally residue so these three approaches any one you can use in determining your standalone selling price and that will bring us to the end of discussion on step 4 that is allocation of transaction price to each performance object if there is a variable consideration or a discount under variable consideration should i allocate it in the same manner answer is yes you can allocate it to each performance obligation such amount of variable consideration or discounts in the proportion of their standalone selling price or otherwise the company can arbitrarily say that the bonus or the discount is applicable only to this performance obligation and not to other performance obligations it can discounts and variable consideration can be allocated in the proportion of standalone selling price or alternatively they can only be allocated to certain performance obligations if they can be demonstrated i'll come to step five the last step in recognition of revenue is step five where a recognized revenue when or as the entity satisfies performance obligation at the beginning already i told you the recognition of revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied means at a point of time as the entity performs obligations is over a period of time so that is what he is mentioning recognize revenue when or as the goods and services are transferred to customer when means at a point of time as means over a period of time i'll recognize revenue what do you mean by transfer transfer is transfer on the control of goods the control over the goods are transferred to customer when you say that the customer controls the good now or the supplier or the company has transferred the control over the good i will say if the physical possession is transferred title is transferred risk and rewards incidental to ownership of the asset are transferred customer has accepted the good and they are entitled the customer is entitled to receive benefit from the good if these five conditions are, are satisfied then you can say that the good or service has been transferred to the control uh, or the control has been transferred to the customer now how do i say when when should i say that i have to recognize revenue at a point of time or over a period of time to demonstrate that look at what he is giving the customer controls the asset as it is created or enhanced the contractor is constructing a building in my land the land belongs to me it is my title he constructed a wall first he constructed a wall so that the material is not lost constructed a wall and put a gate to me i can control i can control the gate because it is in my premises so i control the asset as it is created or enhanced he started laying the flooring he completed the first floor as it is created or enhanced the enterprise can control the asset because it is on my land at a point of time if i say get lost from here the the contractor cannot pick up whatever he constructed and cannot take over so therefore in such cases the control is transferred over a period of time and i can recognize revenue over a period of time but or or the customer receives or consumes a benefit as the entity performs newspaper example what did we say each year i each day i put a newspaper you are consuming the benefit of newspaper it has the same pattern of transfer to the customer though that it is a distinct good but has a, is substantially the same in such case every day the newspaper got delivered the customer took a benefit of every week the magazine was delivered the customer took a benefit of in such case the control is transferred over a period of time therefore recognition of revenue should be over the period of the contract 
the asset has no alternative use the asset has no alternative use that means the asset which the which the supplier is actually creating or the company is creating cannot be sold to anyone else it is only to the customer and even to the extent of part performance they are eligible to receive consideration then the control is transferred over a period of time because if i complete 30 percent i am eligible to receive 30 percent consideration i complete 70 percent i am eligible to receive 70 percent consideration so therefore if the if the asset does not have an alternative use it has to be supplied to the customer only and the entity has a right to receive payment until that date then you can still say that the control is transferred over a period of time asset has no alternative use it has to be used only by that customer only i am preparing i am customizing only for that customer no other customer can requires this item but part performance i am not eligible to receive payment therefore consideration is not eligible to receive unless and until you complete the entire product therefore consideration control is transferred only after the entire completion that is only at a point of time clear for recognizing revenue i have to reasonably measure the progress of the entity towards the completion of the contract to measure the entity's progress whenever i am talking about control being transferred over a period of time recognize revenue over the period of contract on 31st march i am exactly in the middle of the contract how do you estimate how much amount of revenue should be recognized you said recognize revenue over a period of time right over the period of contract i can recognize 31st march i have to close my financials you tell me how much revenue i should recognize that amount to be ascertained the enterprise can use either output method or input method input method is what was given earlier under your as7 under your as7 we used a particular formula called as proportionate completion method it was applicable even under indias 11 as well now it is removed it has come into indias 115 so to measure it you can do it as per input method where you take the cost which has been incurred by the enterprise till date divided by total cost expected to be incurred to complete the contract into 100 to identify how much of percentage of contract has been completed in that way i can measure the enter enterprise progress reasonably in completion of contract output method means i will use what is the amount of output rather than the cost incurred how much has been output been delivered the total contract is for construction of five floors four floors four floors completed 80 percent completed that is output method so this way you will have to make sure that you are reliably measuring the progress of an enterprise in satisfying the obligations under the contract sometimes either input method you use or output method you use i cannot reliably measure the progress i could not measure the progress either by applying input method or output method in such cases i will recognize revenue only to the extent of cost which is eligible to be reimbursed by customer i incurred 100 rupees i expect the customer to reimburse 85 rupees even if the contract stops now then 85 rupees is revenue no profit shall be recognized in such instance where you cannot reliably measure the progress of the enterprise in satisfying performance obligations clear now the cost incurred to satisfy performance obligation are generally incurred in two types certain costs which should be always charged off to pnl because it is not related to the contract like general administration cost wasted resources they will anyways be charged to pn but certain cost is eligible to be capitalized this cost i will recognize in pnl by matching concept to the proportion of revenue i recognize that proportion of cost i will recognize in pn what is this cost eligible to be capitalized direct cost of contract cost to enhance resources and expected cost which i expect to recover from the customer these are costs which are eligible to be capitalized. This cost which is capitalized should be charged to PNL or expensed in PNL in the proportion in which I recognize revenue. As I keep satisfying the performance obligation, I keep on recognizing revenue. 
in the same proportion in which the revenue is recognized, even such cost should be transferred to PL. Clear? Impairment of cost. This is onerous contract. That means if the contract cost capitalized exceeds the revenue to be recognized, then the contract is onerous. That means there is a expected future loss from the contract. Whenever there is an expected future loss in the contract, these are called as onerous contracts which we have already dealt under in days 37. There also I gave you the same example. If the cost incurred to complete the production of a material is more than the estimated selling price. In this case, the cost incurred in completion of the contract is greater than the estimated remaining revenue under the contract, then if there is an expected future loss. Such expected future losses applying the concept of conservatism should be charged to PNL immediately. And that will bring us to the end of discussion on India's 115. The five steps that we have seen as far as measurement of revenue is concerned or recognition of revenue is concerned were identifying the contract, measuring the performance, sorry, measuring the uh, identifying performance obligations under the contract, measurement of transaction price. Allocation of transaction price to performance obligation, recognizing revenue as or when the entity performs the obligation. That is as or when the transfer over the control of good is to the customer. Where the control is transferred to the customer, depending on that basis, I will recognize revenue either over the period of the contract or at a point of time in the contract.